Good morning, Miss Fraser. Full of criminals and nobody man enough to stop them. That's what I get for not wearing guns. A respectable banker of your age shouldn't have to wear guns. I'm not that old nor that respectable. Let's get down to the bank and subtract the losses. Hit bad? Bad enough. Colonel, you better report this to the mayor like you always do. That's your duty, Marshal. As of right now, I quit. Just a moment. And you'd better get to the bank to straighten things up. And we'll open at 10, as usual. There you are, Mayor. It's happened again. Was that the shooting I just heard? You mean to tell me you never stepped outside to take a look? Why should I, Colonel? <clears throat> Them shootings are about as regular as a curfew. No wonder this town's becoming a hotbed of murder and bandits. No one seems to give a hoot about keeping the law. Well, I can't say as I blame them, seeing what happens to those who do. What do you suggest, Colonel? We get a man in here that can stop those Tulliver boys once and for all. For your information, Colonel, it took me two weeks of hard talking to get the last man to accept that badge. It'll be next to impossible to ever get another. Nobody wants to be a bullseye in a shooting gallery. You see there? Everybody feels that way about it. Say, Ed, how would you like to wear this? Oh, no, thanks, Mayor. I got a wife and a couple of kids back east. I'm aiming to go back there one day. You know, it'd be bad enough having my bank robbed if I carried insurance. But I can't get any insurance unless we have a peace officer. Mm -hmm. Every emergency brings forth a great man. When our country needed saving, who was it that stepped forth from obscurity to save it? Abraham Lincoln. Yes, sir. Just so will another great man rise to the occasion in our fair city. What was I talking about? Abraham Lincoln. Oh, yes. Who knows but what at this very minute such a man might not be here among us. Morning, stranger. Morning. Say, ain't seen one of those big boy rifles around here in a month of Sundays. You a buffalo hunter? I was. See what you mean. More people around here now than there are buffalo. Ain't gonna stick around a while? Maybe. Depends on what I find around here for a while. Another? Nope. Got no money. Say, there might be a good job in this town for a man. No like working in cities. Too crowded. Thought maybe I'd find myself a grub steak. Oh, mine is pretty well petered out in this locality. How about ranching? Well, if you don't mind working the hot sun all day, pushing a lot of cows up and down the countryside. Uh, say, beg your pardon, young fella. A am I to understand you are seeking employment? <clears throat> I must look even more beat than I feel. Uh, can you shoot? Can I shoot? I've been making my bread and butter with a gun since I was that high. Hmm. How would you like to earn $100 a month? I made more money than that in one week killing buffalo. Son, in the interest of good citizenship, I personally will raise that ante to two hundred dollars. What's the job? <coughs> Here. Not interested. What seems to be the trouble? A little shy on courage, young man? I'm a peaceful man. Don't like to kill men for money. But this is purely in the interest of the public. It carries with the sanction of your government. Is there any special reason why you can't keep law in this town? 
Why, uh, tut, tut, my boy. As you rode into the fair city of Apache, you must have been aware of the peaceful atmosphere, the serenity, the, the, the spirit of friendliness that oh. permeates the air. I saw all the bullet holes in the bank building. <clears throat> the one the boys were just having a little fun last night. A like 200 is a lot of money. And I'll tell you another thing. I'll throw in a little cabin that I have up in the gulch, and I'll give it to you rent free. And they can eat here on a house as long as you're on a job. Now, I'm getting interested. Second helpings? Well, all you can hold. <laughs> How about drinks? Oh, you're driving a pretty hard bargain. Are you a drinking man? Just enough to wet my appetite. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll throw in three drinks a day on a house. And I'll take the job. And I'm sure this will bring you a great change of luck. Well, I've always been pretty lucky myself. <laughs> sir, another fine thing about this position, sir, you'll find that it's permanent. Permanent? Yes. It'll last you the rest of your life. A little cribbage, Colonel? Yes. And I'll have my first drink. Set him up, bartender. Morning, gents. Sure is a nice, pleasant morning, isn't it? Appears like you don't know us, Marshal. Can't say as I've had the pleasure. Where are the Tullivers? Oh, I sure hope I'm happy to know you boys. Depends upon how you behave. Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, well, I'm just a peaceful man myself. Well, I guess I've taken in enough scenery on this end of town. Guess I'll be heading back. the Tullivers? Sure, what about them? I just met up with them this morning. You got back here alive? Well, looks like El Dorado has itself a real marshal after all. You really think so? Yeah. Here, buy yourself a drink. Yeah, thanks. If you could direct me to the nearest hotel. Well, we don't exactly have a hotel here in town. There's a couple rooms over the saloon, though. Oh, I'm afraid I wouldn't be able to rest very well. They stay open all night, don't they? Yeah, I'm afraid they do. I've got just the place for you. A nice, quiet little cabin just out of town. I'll rent it to you very reasonable. What do you call reasonable? Now, you have a shrewd head under that pretty little hat, don't you? That is a pretty little hat. Do you mind if I try it on? Why, no. How do I look? Very nice. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll swap you. Swap? Yeah, I'll trade my hat for yours, and you give me 20 to boot. Oh, I wouldn't think of depriving you of your own hat. I can see that it's been a close part of you for a long, long time. How do you know? Well, I can smell. I mean, I can tell. Yeah, I guess old Hat and I have been together a long time. Hate to lose it. Say, getting back to that cabin. I'll rent it to you for 50 a month. Oh, I couldn't afford that. You see, at the present time, I'm without employment. How about 40? I'm afraid I'll have to look elsewhere. You're a likable sort of fellow. I'll give it to you for 30. Make that 15 and it's a deal. Cash? Perhaps I'd better see the place first. 
Well, I can't take you out there right now. I'm uh, sort of on duty. But I'll tell you where it is, right out and take a look at it. You follow the street, the first gully. You turn to the left, second cabin on the right-hand side. Can't miss it. Thank you kindly, sir. Are you going out on that? I'm afraid this is the only means of transportation that I have. Maybe you'd better borrow Tom Pruitt's horse. Won't he object? Won't do him any good. I got him locked up in jail. Threw a chair at the mayor last night. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Is this the horse you mentioned? That's it. Where's your guns? Oh, I never carry firearms. Well, you'd better start cultivating the habit. My goodness gracious, what for? Well, suppose a grizzly bear, a mountain lion, got in that cabin last night. What would you do? Well, I... I would, uh... Now, there's a nice little killer. I'll rent it to you at a special bargain price. No, thanks. I'll... I'll just depend on my wits, as I've always done. <laughs> I'm trying. Here. Put your foot, my hand, and up on the saddle. On three. One, two, three. Oh, 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 boy. oh, 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 Nobody got this idea ahead of us. Nope, it ain't been touched. It's gonna take a while to dig it out, though. You know, our brothers are not gonna like this. Well, there ain't enough to split between the five of us, no how. No. There's hardly even enough for two. Better take a look around, see if anybody's coming. Uh-uh, Doc. You dig. I'll do the looking. Hello, Marshal. Do you know anything about Tom Pruitt's horse? Yeah, I lent it to a friend of mine. I got Tom Pruitt locked up in jail. He won't be needing it. Uh, he ain't in the jailhouse anymore. I, I let him out on a ten, ten dollar fine. You better get his horse back pronto, or he'll be shooting you or your friend for, for a horse thief. For a horse thief? Wow. I'd better do something about it. Oh, Mayor, that'll be 50 cents, please. Oh, yes, yes. I, I plumb forgot, my man. <laughs> Mine on something else. <coughs> it's here, all right, just like we left it. Well, hurry up and dig it out. Well, if you're in such a powerful hurry, dig it out yourself. Pardon me, gentlemen. I didn't know you were supposed to be here. As a matter of fact, I don't believe you are. Just look at that mess. Haven't you any respect for other people's property? What are you getting so worked up about? This ain't your cabin. I just rented it. And I'll thank you to clean up that mess. Ha <laughs> ha! Land sakes alive and lousy me. I'm afraid we couldn't do that, little man. It wouldn't be polite to keep our horses waiting. I shall report this to the town marshal immediately. Ah, shut up and sit down. How are we going to talk this stuff, Doc? 
We'll borrow the Tenderfoot's carpet bag. You did this all by yourself? No. Well, you must have. There's nobody else here. I mean, I didn't do it at all. Why, two of the Tolliver boys. I've been hearing about them all morning. Man, look at this loot. Say, you must have hit the jackpot. I tell you, I didn't kill them. This day will go down in the history of Arizona. When we take this money into town, there'll be more celebrating than there was when Wyatt Earp killed the clan of the OK Corral. I tell you, I didn't do it. They shot each other. I don't want any credit for it. Do I look like a killer? Well, you can't always tell the book by the cover. You're not going to say that I killed him, are you? Well, seeing it's you and we're such close friends, uh, I'll take the credit myself. Oh, thank you, sir. Say, we'd better get out of here. Some more of those boys lot will show up. Oh. I'll take it. I don't know, Colonel. All I heard is that two of the Tulliver boys got shot. Tulliver? It serves him right, Dad. Now maybe we'll get some of your money back. Well, I'll have to look into this. I'll see you at the bank, my dear. Fifteen hundred and three? Fifteen hundred. That's me. Why, hello there, Colonel. Yes. Here's your money, say. Thanks to our brave defender of law and order. Well, I'm mighty grateful to you, sir. Tell me, how in the world did you accomplish it? Yes, tell us, Marshal. How did it happen? Yes. Well, it was like this. I, uh, <clears throat> I figured the cabin was the most likely spot, seeing as how it belonged to the man they stole the money from. Say, that's an angle I've never thought of. So I sneaked up to the window like an Indian fighter would do before walking into a trap. I saw the two Tulliver boys inside. I pulled my gun and... Go ahead, Marshal. The excitement's killing us. Yes. Tell us, how did you get the drop on them Tullivers? Drop? Drop on the Tullivers? Did I say I got the drop on the Tullivers? Well, that was the implication. Well, I didn't mean any such a thing, gentlemen. All I said was, when I got to the Colonel's cabin, there was two bodies laid out on the floor and, uh, I was going to tell you how it happened, that's all. Well, uh, if you didn't kill them, who did? There's the man who deserves all the credit. No, no, not I, really. I never killed anybody. Don't listen to him, gentlemen. Like Abraham Lincoln, he's much too modest. How did it go? Well, I've been... Oh, yes, I remember. I started for the door, but he jumped in front of me. First one of the Tulliver boys starts shooting, and then the other. He pulled his gun. Fired so fast, looked like two lightning striking at the same time. First he got Jake, then he got Doc. When it was all over, two men lay dead on the floor. So, gentlemen, there's your hero. What'd you say your name was? It doesn't really matter, does it? Come, come, young man, your name. Well, uh, it's James Ellison. Well, I'm very happy to know you, Mr. Ellison. I'm very happy. And now may I borrow your bag to take the funds back to the bank? Oh, I don't see why not. It doesn't seem to do any good around here to say no. Well, thank you very much. Now, if you'll assist me. That's two and three. Oh, sir, that's all there. And now, if you two gentlemen will afford me a little protection while we go to the bank. You coming, Mayor? I am. <clears throat> After you. Thank you, Marshal. Daddy, I just heard the wonderful news. Yes, indeed. 
And it gives me great pleasure at this time to present the hero of this occasion. Miss Allison, my daughter Anne. How do you do, miss? It's a pleasure to meet a man in this town, Mr. Allison. But I, I really didn't do anything. There's such a thing as being too modest, eh, Anne? <laughs> First thing you know, he'll claim he didn't even have a hand in it. But it's true. I, I didn't have as much to do with it as he. Well, maybe I did help a little, but you're the man that deserves all the credit. I can think of no more fitting hands than yours to pin this decoration on him. With pleasure. Colonel, if anyone wants to know who killed the Tullivers, just say the new deputy marshal. May we have the pleasure of your company at dinner tonight? Why, I'd be delighted. Thank you. And we can discuss the reward money at that time, if it's satisfactory to you, young man. Reward? reward? Why, naturally, there's a reward for recovering the stolen money. Until this evening, then. Good day, gentlemen. <laughs> say, uh, about that reward, uh, Maybe you and I'd better have a little talk. Howdy, you're next. Well, what do I owe you? 25 cents. Thanks, George. Well, what'll it be? Shave or haircut? I think I'll just have a shave today. Once over lightly. And once over lightly she'll be. Or my name ain't Razor Tulliver. Tulliver? Sure. And I ain't ashamed of it. Even if I have got some brothers that's kind of wild. I suppose you heard about a couple of them getting killed. Well, I, uh, I did hear a few rumors. I. Well. The man that did it was a murdering coward, and I'd give a month's profits to have him in this chair right now. Stop the squirming, will you? Yes, sir. I'd give him just about the same chance to give old Doc and Jake. Just a little nick on the throat. Right there, about an inch deep. Quit worrying, will you? I ain't never drew blood yet unless I aim to. By the way, stranger, what's your business in town? Well, I, uh, I'm just looking around. Looking for work, I suppose. Well, there we are. I'll just bet you a dollar against the shave I just give you, but I can guess your occupation in three guesses. All right, sir, I'll, I'll take that bet. All right. Now, you just sit here and steam a while while I go and try and figure you out. Here we are. Seems to be a couple of spots here I missed, young fellow. So if you'll just hold your head back. How is that, sir? A little more. There, that's fine. Just fine. Mr. Allison? Well, how do you do, Mayor? How are you, Razor? Say, I saw you through the window, and I thought I'd have a little talk with you. Well, I'll, uh, I'll be with you in just a minute. No hurry, no hurry at all. Mm -hmm. 
Well, young man, now that you're a deputy, we'll have to get you a proper outfit. Well, that'll be just fine. Better luck next time, Mr. Tulliver. About what, deputy? About guessing a man's occupation. It's too bad that the mayor had to come in just when he did. Yeah, too bad. It was a delicious dinner, my dear. You're as good a cook as your mother. Thank you, Daddy. I'm so glad you decided to stay with us a while, Mr. Ellison. Thank you. Well, this is a promising little town. I'd kind of like to stay right on. That reminds me. Dad was saying the other day he needs a young man in the bank. <laughs> Seems like I've already got a job. Oh, there's no future in that kind of work. I can believe that. Say, Miss Ann, if I were to call on you once in a while, I wouldn't be cutting in on some other fellow, would I? Oh, no. I've never had any use for the young men in this town. None of them have any courage. They're all frightened by the Tullivers. Dad, remember you were worrying about replacing the bookkeeper who quit after the holdup? I've just persuaded Mr. Ellison to take the job. Well, now... Well, he's a very nice young man, and I'd like to have him. But subtracting Tullivers doesn't prove that he can add up figures. Oh, but I'm sure he can. I bet Mr. Ellison's had plenty of experience. Well, there goes my only objection. You can come to work first thing in the morning, young man. There, now, see? It's all arranged. Well, thank you very much, Colonel. I'll see you in the morning. Sure, sir. Thank you, Miss Ann. Good night. Oh, I'll walk to the gate with you. Uh, would you mind, Dad? No. I'll be right back. Evening, Colonel. What do you want this time, Tulliver? I came here about that deputy marshal. Well, what about him? I checked up on him when I had him in my chair. He's a special investigator sent here by the governor. Are you sure? He carries a letter of authority. Now, don't let him fool you, Colonel. If that Shamrock Ellison, he's one of the deadliest shots in the Southwest. If he ever gets a look at my books... Don't worry. He'll never see your books. He just left the colonel's. He should be here any minute. I'll take care of him. I think the stables would be the best place while he's putting his horse away. shot? We sure did. No gunfight, I reckon. Must be somebody shot a coyote. Let's drink to the coyote, Razor. Barky, care to join us? I don't know what you're celebrating, but here's how. Leave the bottle and bring us another glass. We're expecting Nate along any minute. Accidents just happened. I think you better give me a hand. See you later.
Not now. Say, that's a mighty good looking outfit. Looks like it was tailor made for you. I lost money when I sold you that outfit. <laughs> Anytime you lose money. Even your voice is different. Say, that's a nice brace of guns you had in your carpet bag. You know, after that horrible experience you had today, how about me giving you some shooting lessons? Lessons? Yeah. I usually charge $10 for my lessons, but as soon as you're part of my organization, I'll give it to you for the special bargain price of $5. All right, when do we start? Right now. Now, uh, the first thing you got to do is learn to draw. Take it easy, take your time, pull your gun. Get familiar with it. Learn to handle it. Very simple. <clears throat> Nate's done for, all right. Where's that deputy? He's still upstairs with the marshal. Well, you couldn't find a better time or place. Go get him. Let me see you do that again. Let's see you try it. <clears throat> I guess I'm a pretty good teacher, huh? Uh, lesson number two. Now, supposing there was a desperado coming through that door. He had his gun drawn. What would you do? Why, I'd do this. Man, oh man, what a day. <laughs> Been in town only two days, put three Tollifers out of business, and run off a fourth. Ha, ha, ha. Man, that calls for a drink on me. Bartender, set him up. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some of that old uh, clothes you got by now. And I'm going over and get a shave. I'll be back shortly. All right, Dad. Good morning, Miss Ann. Good morning. You're down early, aren't you? Well, I wanted to make a good impression on your father. I'm sure you will. How did you get in? I told the janitor I was starting work this morning. Oh, I see. Oh, I'll get it. Good morning, Marshal. What can I do for you? Good morning, Miss. Is the Colonel in? Oh, no, he isn't in just now. Can I help? Well, uh, maybe you can at that. I came about the reward. Reward? What reward? Well, for bringing the stolen money in the other day. But, uh, Mr. Ellison did that. Why, shucks, ma'am. The Colonel will tell you himself. I laid it right in his hands. I'm afraid I still don't understand. Everybody knows Mr. Ellison shot those two Tullivers. Shot the two Tullivers? Why, he didn't even have a gun. The two Tullivers were arguing about splitting the money. They shot each other. You know how a young man is. He, he tries to impress the ladies. Personally, I don't care about anything but the reward. I don't know anything about it, and I think you'd better discuss the matter with my father. Good day. I must have said something wrong. How does it feel to be a hero? <laughs> right now, not so good. You better get back to the bank and have that ball open, Colonel. We'll be there at four o'clock for the gold and the deputy. Why, well, that's murder. I'm not going to have that on my conscience. You should have thought of that before you embezzled the bank's money to help out your homesteader friends. Now beat it. What is the matter? Oh, leave me alone. Anne. It's, 
It's stuffy in here. I, I just want to get some fresh air. What's wrong with that? Well, man, what have you been saying to my daughter? Why, nothing. It seems to be more what people are saying about me. What do you mean? Never mind, Colonel. I'm, I'm busy right now. Hmm. Twin Oaks Mine, bring back some dust they want to deposit. Yes, sir. Now. I'll go after the bank closes. I don't mind the overtime. I said I want you to go right now. Colonel, is there any reason why you don't want me here? I might as well admit it. I know who you are and why you're here. What are you going to do about it? Well, in as much as I don't have all the facts, I'm not too sure. Come on, Colonel. You and I are going to have a little talk. Marshal, the Tullivers will be in town any minute. Well, I'm mighty happy to see him. Say, I'll... who'd you say? You'd better get in the back room, man. I can't shoot very well from in the back room.
Daddy. I'm all right. You take care of yourself. They're going to rush us. Give the colonel a hand. I'll try to hold them off. Camera. Get the horses and beat you in front of the saloon. All right, boys, we can get back to our poker games now. The shooting's over. We're going after the teller, boys. Who's with me? Well, how about it, boys? Which of you gentlemen want to join the posse? How about you, Mr. Mayor? Well, now, see here, a man of my position, I, I don't think I ought to go. Besides, uh, a fellow can get hurt that way. There ought to be one man here. How about you, Ed? It's like I said, I got a family back east, you know. Well, then let me put it like this. I've been authorized by the governor to enforce the law anywhere in this state. And in pursuance of that order, I'm deputizing you and you and you and, and you. Step outside, all of you. We sure got a rough bunch of boys here, Lucky. Better keep an eye on them so they leave a few bandits for us. See if they don't get away. I'll be right back. Mind your P's and Q's, boys, and you won't get hurt. I'd like to speak to your father alone, Miss Ann. It'd be better all the way around, Colonel, if you'd tell us where the Tulliver hideout is. They've got a little cabin in... Sunset Canyon. They'll most likely go there first, then head for the border. Thanks. All right, boys. You do as I say, and there'll be no trouble. I don't get it. Never mind. Let's get going. Lucky, I'll ride point. You ride hard on and pick off any stragglers. There won't be any stragglers. Now 
Listen, men, you're going to ride up this canyon. When you get up there about two miles, you're going to start shooting and hollering for all you're worth. Where are you going to be? Don't worry, cowboy, you won't get hurt. Get going, boys. That must be their hideout. Sure. Comfy? And in recognition of your services to the town of Helderada, allow me to present this slight token of our esteem. The leading merchants and citizens wish to offer you the certified check for $500. Thank you, Mayor. And now I'd like to say a word. After you boys rode out of town this afternoon, the homestead has paid off their loan. And with the money that you've recovered, I am now able to pay off every cent. Dad, what are you talking about? Oh, never mind, Ann. It's just a little business. I can wait to say it's a mighty nice afternoon for a walk. Do you care to join me, Mayor? Walk? Walk? Oh, yes. Lovely afternoon for a walk. Uh, I'd like a stroll. Come in, Colonel. <laughs> it's about time you got the idea. Do you need a cue too? 